The point of this video is that we're going to utilize this to teach you how to perform fine needle aspirations or biopsies in the ultrasound department. We do it mainly on thyroid nodules, but you can apply these techniques to evaluating other masses such as in the liver and to biopsy them or really anywhere in the body and you can also use it for paracentesis and thoracentesis. The advantages of, of doing fine needle aspiration or biopsies under ultrasound guidance is that we have real-time imaging, we don't need ionizing radiation, and the technique is also technically portable. The first thing you need to know is how to set up the tray. So the trays come prepackaged like this in our department. Upon opening it, you don't need to be sterile at this point, but you need to carefully open them. And you pull these little tabs, being careful not to contaminate what's inside. And they will open in a sequential fashion, revealing the tray and all the contents we need. Once the tray is open, we can add our ancillary things that we will need during the procedure. We start off here with some 4x4s, and we will need a package of these. And again, we open them carefully, not to touch the 4x4s inside, and carefully dump onto the tray. We will also be using betadine in the procedure. And what I do is I soak these 4x4s with the betadine. And this is to clean the patient and also the probe once we do the procedure. You could use gel, sterile gel, during the procedure. It comes prepackaged in cases like this, and some of the attendings prefer to use this. I actually just use betadine on the probe and the patient, and that actually acts as a good acoustic window. But some attendings will want you to use betadine, uh, sorry, will want you to use gel. It is sterile in these packets. Other things we will need specifically for a fine needle aspiration of the thyroid are 25 gauge needles. These come prepackaged, and the way to open this is there is a butterfly opening on one end. You carefully pull open and let it just drop onto the tray. We usually use multiples of these, three or four, and place them all on the tray. We will also use 3cc syringes, and these two open in a similar fashion. And again, being careful not to touch them until they'll just let them fall onto the tray. Also necessary are some sterile fields, and these also come prepackaged. Again, they have a butterfly opening at the top, which you can open. And carefully, again, not touching the actual field or drape, just drop it onto the tray. We generally use two of these to drape out the patient. Once we have done that, then we turn our attention to actually putting on the gloves. The gloves come prepackaged. This is not sterile on the outside, but the inside is sterile. You open the gloves, and you can start with either the right or left hand. The gloves are folded over. This portion will be against your wrist, so it is okay to touch, and carefully put your hand into the glove. Take care to only touch the outside portion and bring it back. Now with your sterile hand, you can take up the other glove, carefully, keeping on the sterile side, and again, placing it on, this side sterile, and you can now put your gloves on sterily. Once your gloves your gloves are on your hands and you're sterile, now you can touch the contents in the tray. Within these trays comes another drape that has a hole in it. I prefer not to use it, but some attendings will. There are some 4x4s, which you have here, and then there's also lidocaine for numbing the patient. And these come with various needles. I prefer to use a 5cc syringe to draw up the lidocaine. Always check to make sure that they have packaged lidocaine, it should be 1%, and always check the expiration date before drawing it up. This metal tab flips up, and then you can put one of these needles onto the 5cc syringe, draw up some air, inject that air while puncturing the lidocaine bottle, and then you can draw back your lidocaine. 
carefully take the needle off the syringe and we usually use either a 22 or more commonly one of the 25 gauge needles to actually numb up the patient. And this will be set aside. The remainder of the tray, the way I like to set it up and each attending is different as I divide these up and I actually lay out my needles beforehand so I can easily grab them when I'm doing the biopsy and I place them thusly into the 4x4s. These are not actually used during the actual biopsy process but then when you hand off to the cytology technologist I usually place the needles on these with the sample so I have them pre-positioned like this with a little bit of air so after I've performed my biopsy I can then just reach over attach these and hand them off to the cytopathology technologist who can then make slides out of them. So again, different attendings will have different setups. This is the one I prefer and this is the way we start our biopsy. And now we'll go through the actual process of doing the biopsy. For the biopsy we can use generally very thin 25 gauge needles. Sometimes if we want a little larger sample, we may use a 22 gauge needle. These, as I was saying, we stick into the patient without the benefit of a syringe and cells are actually drawn up into the needle through capillary action by a back and forth motion once we are in the nodule, which I will demonstrate later. You could place a syringe onto the needle and biopsy in that manner, which some people do, and try to apply some suction. I find this just draws up more bleeding during the procedure and is usually not necessary. The other device that is commonly used, not so much for thyroid biopsies, but liver and other places in the body, is you can use what's called a biopsy gun. And these come in various shapes and forms. They have different lengths of needles and different what we call throw distances once they are fired. This particular model is cocked back this way, and if you look carefully at the needle, there's a little trough here where the sample is actually going to be obtained. It's a coaxial system with an outer sheath that when you fire, comes across that trough, shearing off a sample that'll be within there. In this model, we cock it once, and then again, and now this is armed and loaded. There are two ways to fire the device. You can hold it here and fire it in this manner with this button, or you can hold it with your thumb over and fire in this. When it does fire, it will make a noise which you may want to tell the patient about so they don't get startled, and it's a very rapid sequence of events when it is fired. And that will then attain the sample. To get the sample, then you pull back on the outer sheath, and the sample will be within the trough here. We will now go on to the actual biopsying on a phantom. Now we're going to go over the actual technique of biopsying. With the biopsy, there's various transducers we could use. The two main ones we use is this one here, which is a linear high frequency transducer, uh, 12 megahertz frequency. Some of the attendings prefer this, which is the hockey stick. So either one you should be familiar with, but they both work in similar manners. I prefer the linear transducer. There's really two techniques that we could use. This is actually a spinal needle, which sometimes we employ, especially for deeper lesions. And there's either the parallel technique or the perpendicular technique. The parallel technique is much more preferred because you can actually see the whole length of the needle. So you're going to place, this is our phantom, but we can pretend this is our patient. And we're going to place the transducer right on the patient. We're going to use some sort of coupling agent. In this case, we are using gel. We could put a probe cover actually over the uh, transducer, which some attendings like to do. What I prefer to do actually is you can put betadine all over this probe cover, uh, all over this transducer, and you can also betadine the whole area here and that actually acts as a good acoustic coupling so you don't need to use probe covers or gels which may clog up the needle. 
So in the parallel technique, what we are going to do is we're going to find our target, and then once we are right over the target, we are going to place the needle at a 45 degree angle right at the edge of the transducer, right in the middle of the transducer. This is going to give us our greatest chance of picking up the track of our needle. And with this technique, we should be able to see the whole track of the needle as it goes in. The other possible technique is what's called the perpendicular technique, where you can actually go in here in the middle of the transducer, sort of more perpendicular to the uh, transducer itself. I don't prefer this technique because now all you're able to see is just the tip of your needle, which you now must kind of follow down through the tissues. Where this technique is good is if you have a very large nodule that you can sort of go straight down on, or it's actually good for when you're using vessels because you want to be, if you're trying to put a line into a vessel, you want to be transverse to the vessel so you can see exactly where your needle is going in with relation to the vessel. But for most thyroid nodules and other lesions, like in the liver, I prefer the parallel technique. Some of the little pearls to remember with this is that you want to start again right at the edge of the transducer at a 45 degree angle right in the middle of the transducer. You can kind of use this line here to figure out where the middle of the transducer is. The more parallel you are to or perpendicular you are to the beam, the easier it is to see your needle. The steeper you are, the harder it is to see the needle. So it's good to start with about a 45 degree angle. If you're having trouble finding your needle once you are in, what I do is I puncture and go in first, and then holding the needle steady, you can slowly go back and forth with the transducer, keeping everything parallel. The little mnemonic I used to like to do and tell the residents is that if everything's in line, you will see just fine. Okay, so if everything is lined up, then you should be able to see your needle just fine. If you start drifting off and angling the transducer, you're not going to pick up your needle. If you start drifting off even parallel to it, you won't see it either. And again, don't move both the needle and the transducer. Just keep the needle steady and then slowly back and forth and you eventually will find your needle. Again, I don't like gel or covers, but those techniques can be used. You want to use the highest frequency transducer that can penetrate the patient for the best resolution. And then also you should set your focal zone at about the level of the nodule that you're seeing, which again will allow you better resolution. Now we're going to show you on the screen how this all looks. Now I have set it up that I'm doing the parallel technique. I am at a 45 degree angle at the edge of my transducer and here you can see the tip of my needle and you can see with this technique that you can follow the full length of the needle to the target. What I prefer is once I have the target in line and I see there's no structures in my way that could suffer from me hitting them, then I usually do in a nice single plunging motion go right into the nodule or lesion. For fine needle aspirations, the technique then is to go back and forth with the needle in the nodule and again, by capillary action, this will draw cells up. And you can see here, if I just slightly turn my transducer, I'm now losing the needle. But if I make everything in line, I can see it fine. If you drift off, just drift back until you see your needle and tip again, and then obtain your sample. And again, this technique can be used anywhere in the body and is useful for biopsying any lesions. Once you're done, you can just retract the needle and come out. Now I've placed a biopsy gun next to the lesion and with this we're just going to actually fire through to get our sample. And again it's going to make a noise. There's also a certain throw length of the needle so that's why I usually put it at the edge of the lesion as you see here because the actual sample is going to occur much deeper in. Usually a throw of about two centimeters is typical. So here we press the button and you can see as it fires th straight through the lesion and then we pull out. After taking the biopsy gun out and retracting to reveal the well, you can see here that you actually have this greenish material is the sample which we have now a nice core of tissue 
which we can place onto a telpha pad and then send off to pathology. So that is in summary how we perform fine needle aspirations and biopsies, especially in the ultrasound department.